Call the meeting to order. Service committee meeting. Call the roll, Mr. Burgess. Okay. Mr. Brennan. Present. Mr. Burgess. Yes. Present. Ms. Gleaton. Ms. Herbert. Yes. Mr. Unthank. Mr. Unthank, I think you're muted. I guess he's going to dial back in. We have a, a motion for adoption of the agenda. Second. Second. Call the roll. Ms. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Burgess? Yes. Ms. Layton? Ms. Herbert? Yes. Mr. Unthank. Mr. Unthank, you are still muted. We can't hear his speaker may not be on. He's, he's unmuted and I can't I can't manually do it. So I may have to give him a call. Um, yeah. Uh, with the adoption of agenda, we moved to Mr. Simo, Midland Transit Riders Association. So, so, uh, uh, thank you for letting me speak on Simo. It's some you may know I'm uh, filling in for Walter Wells and recuperating from some stuff. So um, I thoroughly went over the information that Walter gave me and actually have had some conversations with him uh, most recently last night. Um, and the one I want to focus on right now is the proposed I-26 Express Route 93X. Is, uh, and I've been arguing for a route like this for years, so I'm not here. The suggestions I'm not, are not criticisms. They're suggestions that I would like to make in order to uh, move it along and make sure that it's a success. Um, I know that it's going to be taken, and I understand from Walter that you have spoken to Chapin uh, Town Council. He wasn't exactly sure where they were on that as far as first reading, second reading, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, I did suggest to him that because of past problems we've had with the permanent area and Chapin is just like this, um, it would not only be a good idea to have a Lexington representative as a liaison, from the comment, but our Richland County representative, because I can be standing here and be in Richland County. I can cross over to Mr. Pearl and be in Lexington County. Um, so I, I think as a precaution um, that that would be a good thing to consider doing. Um, another suggestion that I discovered is that uh, I work in the area as an employee of Richland School District One. I have applied for a job there. I've grown up in the area, and uh, I now substitute in the area. The area of Columbia Avenue, which I think is a terrific area, and Chapin Avenue, fall, uh, has two schools there, Lexington Richland School District Five. So my suggestion would be to, in addition, to bringing this to the Chapin uh, Town Council, 
which you have already done, and I again I thank you for that, is to bring this to the Lexington Richmond School District Five, specifically the at large and the representative for the Chapman area. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm mentioning this because District Five is, as although it's the best school in the state, it is the also the most competitive. If Chapin builds a school, but the Irma's got to build a bigger school. Spring Hill's got to build a bigger school. <clears throat> that's the attitude that you're dealing with. And that's also a area that is a high rent, high mortgage. We don't want our property values to drop. And the first thing, in other words, not in my backyard. If you don't bring the school district in on this, and I'm speaking from experience with the school district and with this board, uh, having worked on in the past with Walter and Charles on various issues, that's what you're going to get. And they're going to say, well, that bus stops right near on Columbia Avenue, right near my school. Now, yes, Spring Hill, the address for Spring Hill and for the alternative school up is Broad River Road. But those schools are so large that they also cover Columbia Avenue and part of Chapin Avenue. Um, you don't want to alienate parents in Chapin County in District 5. If you do, you will never see this take off. I've seen this happen before with other routes. And so uh, please consider that. Um, so I would, and the best way to do that is you've already got Chapin on your side. Okay. The best way to get the Chapin representative school district five on your side is to get a Chapin town council on your side. Uh, and I would stay in contact with them from with both our Lexington and Richmond County representatives. Mr. Excuse me one moment. Uh, Mr. Coetzee, is 93X an existing route? No, it's one of the proposed routes. Uh, excuse me. Uh, no, sir. It, is it, we don't have a 93X? No, this is it's one of the, the proposed the, routes. It was discontinued. Yeah, we discontinued it. Yeah. Because of low ridership. Yeah. yeah. The way the way that I understand it from is originally it came out of Newberry, but with the new Lucius Road. But if we have did, eliminated that route, what are you talking about? Okay, you well, mentioned proposed now. No, no, you, we have you, eliminated that route. No, you, okay. I, uh, uh, maybe I'm not making myself on the information that you gave me when starting with the Lucius Road. You're going to have some new routes, and one of the new routes is going to be the 93X, except it's not going to come into Newberry because that did get low ridership. Instead, it's going to it's it's going to involve Chapin, and you guys have already got Chapin on your side because it is total it is a totally congested area, and they afford the bus system in there. Okay, um, so it's a it's it's um. I'm looking forward, uh, 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 I'm speaking about a, a, a route that you're planning and you've already gone forward with Chapin. They said, yeah, we're for it. I'm also advising that you go to the Chapin representative for the school district as, um, as a safety mechanism. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ferdinand, for not being clear on that. I thought I said I mentioned it is a proposed route. Uh, it, the route that you have, the information that I have, it comes from it's only coming from Chapin. Chapin's already behind it. Okay. Um, my thing is that the school district that covered that area is so divided that it's good to keep in contact with the representative that represents the school from that area. Okay. So that's what I was speaking about, sir. I'm sorry if I did not make myself clear. Thank you very much. Um, uh, oh, yes. Um, so I, I really, that's basically, uh, those were basically 
Uh, my comments, I did have one or two other notes. Um, so please, uh, you might want to talk to District 5 about that um, and let them know because they uh, otherwise they will get the not my backyard thing. Uh, and, Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Uh, I did Appreciate want to make it. one other, um, uh, one other, one or two others, uh, and then I'll, then I'll, I'll summarize. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but because that area is congested, there is an extension of I-26 that is currently Thank under you, Mr. Um, we we have your information. If you have something written well, on no, the email, this, 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 well, we, uh, hey, can, may I just but finish? Though you, uh, may we've I just, discontinued a route. We discontinued no, this, for some reason. But these recommendations you're giving that isn't how we no, proceed. No, this is this, this, in the in, Mr. Burgess, Please, this is a route that you guys are already planning. But okay, and this is a this is a so I'm just asking. I'm, I'm going on current information that, that, that Mr. Durst gave me. This is this is this is not a this is not a current route. This is a route that you have decided to go, go from another end, and that those people that that town. But is you're repeating it. yourself rather than tell. Well, you, I, you told it, us in the beginning. Now you're going back over. Okay. What is it you're trying to get the board I, to do? I, I, I'm trying. I'm just trying to make some suggestions so that the board may have, may, it may be easier for the board to get this going sooner and for the riders to take advantage of it. Um, I, 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 I'm saying that I acknowledge you've done a lot of terrific work and I'm just making suggestions based on my knowledge of the area and the the organizations in that area over the past 45 years, my family and I have dealt with, that this would make it easier if you did one or two added things. I'm just asking, I'm just asking you to consider that. I'm not, I'm not ordering you, that's not my place to do. I'm just saying, would you please consider this? And um, that's all, I'm, I'm just making suggestions. The only other thing I had to say was in planning this route, which I've I've argued for years. Uh, the Thank MTR you, Mr. Simo. is. Yeah. May I finish, uh, sir? Please. No, no. no. I, I'm just, Mr. Simo, this, we just can't continue. Sir, I go. that's not our thing. procedures Mr. at all. Burgess, I I'm, I'm going to recommend that you be better prepared when I with the data when you come to talk. I am better prepared. I have everything written. And all I have to do is make one statement. And if you had not interrupted me, sir, I mean no disrespect, I would have said it by now. I, I, I'm just making this one suggestion, okay? I don't know if you are aware, but there is an area of I-26. This is a proposed route. And I would like to, I, maybe you've taken this into account, maybe you haven't, that is, having major construction on it. Knowing this would be good for two reasons. When this route is proposed to the people of Chapin, to District 5, whoever, it would be good to, first of all, and they don't like it, you're gonna have an alternate route possibly. I would like to see it, however, because I believe this route can succeed, exist, uh, succeed, you will get a lot of ridership, is that that would be good as a future extension route that connects with uh, Bush River and Broad River Road. Um, and it might be a good idea if any of you have connections with the DOT to get an idea as to how many months, how many years, that's going to take because, as you know, Mr. Fergus, uh, when they did, when they did I'm, I'm, I'm going to suspend this. You know, you, you're just rambling now. And I think coming and not being prepared. I am and, prepared. I have everything uh, but, written. But we thank you for sir. your presentation. Okay. I thank you for your time. I would be glad to speak to anybody after the meeting. 
I just wanted to, I, I am for this route. Uh, and I just wanted to try to make things easier. Um, and Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes. And, and Mr. Seymour, we will definitely take that under advisement and we will uh, make sure that we do work with DOT on I-26 and any future route modifications that we make. Okay, and, and also you might, again, I, I do stress the importance of, I, I appreciate that you've spoken to Chapin Town Council, but I know that, this, but, but you, you have two new major schools yes, there. Please talk to the Chapin representative for District 5. Yes, sir. To let them know, otherwise you're gonna have this problem. I'm yes, speaking from- You certainly will. We'll take what you said under advice. Thank you. And next on the agenda is the adoption of the minutes. I move. Okay, second. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Hargis? Yes. Ms. Gleaton? Ms. Herbert? Yes. Um, thank. Motion carries. Okay, now we do discussion items. Uh, I think this election of committee chair, usually the chair is appointed. Never, I don't know how that. Uh, I'll defer to you. Do we just open it up for nominations? I don't think we can do that. Our bylaws, the chair the is always appointed, you know. So what does our bylaw say? I can I can check the bylaws. I know at, at the last board meeting, Ms. Horatio mentioned that she wanted you all to elect a chair. Um, I can check the can bylaws. We just defer this and to get the Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We defer. We defer. All right, and I don't have Zach McGee on to present the passenger amenities program update. Um, I have not heard from him, so. I will reach out to him and I also don't have Mr. Harris on the line. I'll reach out to both of them. Uh, Mr. Pearl, did you want to um, speak to the Lucius and River? I want to ask you something about this. Is, is uh, Eric Harris still on board? He is still on board, yes, sir. Okay. Now he's on board. He, he has two meetings a month, right? A service meeting and a thing. So do you know? Do you know that he wouldn't be here today? I was not aware that he was not going to be here today, sir. You need to look into that because he's your your employee now. Yes, he he's contracting with us, and right. yes, sir, I understand. All right, so. And he has two things there: ridership analysis, Lucius River Road. Does he have any information on those issues? They are still continuing to work on, on the ridership and, and the uh, effectiveness of that and how that, how Lucius and River is potentially going to affect and what number of passengers um, on, on those routes. And then on as far as the uh, other issue that we're having with water seepage, uh, we have been going to the executive session for discussion on that. And Eric has been involved with that. He 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 knows what's going on with that. Yes, sir. And are we going to go into executive session today for that uh, feedback? It's not on the agenda. That's what I was, I was uh, looking at. It looks like the only information we're going to get today is from Mr. Cooks. Mr. Cooksey. Yes, sir. Uh, good, good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I promise I won't take too much of your time. Uh, reports on uh, pages 10 to, through 23. Uh, could have Mr. Uh, Mr. Franklin briefly uh, discuss. I uh, know. It was mentioned, you know, we talked about the detailing of the vehicle and the cleaning of the vehicle. Uh, a new company start. Uh, we'll have Mr. Franklin just briefly talk about really our campaign or plan on uh, getting those buses uh, cleaned and back at the bar uh, or satisfactory. 
so Dennis, can you just talk about that? And then I'll take that back over and cut you into my report. Certainly. Um, we had a contractor called Fleet Clean that was doing it. Uh, they're, uh, they weren't doing the job that they need to be done. And, and obviously the board made an indication of that as well. So we brought in a DB, another DB company, BNC Associates, and they started on March 1st. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, two different campaigns. One of them is going to be, we're basically calling our window campaign. They're going to be working with, um, we went, I worked with Zep and got these chemical compounds and we found the right mixture of everything. So uh, we're going to use this thing called uh, Zep Team and a soft scrub pad, and we're going to get all the windows the windshields, the mirrors, everything, all the, the water spots, hard spots, whatever we get off. And at the same time, we're going to be starting our second campaign, which is the rims, the chrome bumpers, all that. We found a chemical called uh, Big Z and utilize in our glass cleaner. We're able to pretty much get those back to almost where they were factored by getting all the, the hazy material off and any of the hard water spots that were coming up. So. Um, we are, we are getting um, they like I said they just started on March first. Um, this is going to be uh, in conjunction with everything we're doing on the service line. So we're going to be hitting these, you know, hard. But we're going to be working on getting the first round of the windows done, and then as those are done, then we're going to hit them again and again until we get as much material off those windows. And then pretty much I have on that unless somebody has question okay so just wanted to kind of give you an update that we are we're tackling the, that issue so uh, i'm looking forward to uh, us progressing we still got quotes coming in in reference to our bus wash uh some adjustments that need to be made and things of that nature so waiting on quotes to come in on that so that way everything's firing all cylinders uh, we'll keep you posted on on how we're doing in reference to our bus cleaning hopefully you should be able to see it on the streets uh, something else that came up also during the board meeting, just a quick update. Uh, what I have so far is in reference to uh, filters, HVAC filters for the buses. Uh, cu currently, our maintenance team has reached out to New Flyer, which is our manufacturer, and ABC, which is uh, where we purchase uh, parts and things of that nature. So right now, we're waiting on them for filter options and pricing. Um, to be able to look at what's out there in the industry. Um, I looked at what Lake County, Lake Express in Florida uses um, and did share that information. They use like a HEPA two air purifier unit. So, you know, let, let's, uh, the goal is to kind of see what options they bring us. I mean, I ran some numbers just looking at what they use and at our size fleet. I mean, you're probably looking at over a hundred thousand at least. Um, if you move in that direction of a technical system on the bus. But again, we're just waiting on New Flyer and ABC to come back with more information so we can kind of look at the numbers, look at the filters, and see what best works for us. Um, also, remember, I, you know, when, when that bus is traveling, the doors are opening often. It's moving <coughs> itself on a regular basis on top of the system that's already there. So I just want us to be mindful uh, and, and we're thinking that through, the, you know, what that looks like. So, you know, I hope to have more information potentially by the board meeting or shortly thereafter, just waiting on uh, more information so I can share it and we'll give another breakdown of what that looks like. I know, Mr. Pearl, did you have anything you wanted to add to, to that? Or is... uh, I, I don't. I, I just know, you know as Rixie said, we are... They are looking into that and, and we'll come up with a couple of different options to present to the team and uh, what the cost associated with those are. As Kukusi said, once we have enough information, mm -hmm. uh, viable options to present to the service committee and the board, then we present those at that time. I did take a look at the customers, the customer service uh, uh, complaints in that area. You know, we had had, that's the, I guess what was driving this, the concerns in reference to the windows, opening, closing, things of that nature. And since we were able to fix those, uh, the last 40 days, we have not received any complaints related to the windows, the, the atmosphere on the bus or the temperature on the bus or anything of that nature. So, so far, 
uh, nothing related to the game. So I'll uh, be monitoring that as well. Um, and again, um, just jumping to to some of the highlights, highlighted things on the report. Uh, five of the six, we exceeded target in five of our six areas uh, in reference to our KPIs, uh, as far as our customer service, uh, maintenance uh, numbers, <coughs> um, safety, and so forth. Um, I would like to do it to make an announcement. Phyllis James, and she wasn't able to be with us. Uh, she's out driving. But Phyllis Jamison was employee of the month. Um, Phyllis has been with us, I believe, about 20 years, 20 year plus employee. She enjoys fishing, mom of two, favorite football team, Dallas Cowboys, and she enjoys music. And we'd like to uh, congratulate her for it's just a solid employee. We had a lot more of uh, Phyllis Jamison's. Uh, in reference to our recruiting efforts, I, uh, I did make some announcement that we had a job fair here on the 29th looking for bus operators. Went very well. I think overall, uh, competitive market, our next class size uh, coming up March the uh, 15th, I believe. Uh, from that date. But we have 15 scheduled for our next class. Um, these are all individuals with commercial driver's license. We're finding that very competitive. Those who have a CD, a commercial CDL license A or B, you know, those are the cream of the crop. So this class, we have 15. Uh, and so we'll continue. We'll do our training here and get them ready for revenue service. So we're pretty excited. And we have a lot of residuals from that too. So I want to thank the comment for also uh, marketing that for us and putting that out there. I mean, we're still at getting people coming in and inquiring about that. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll keep pushing in that area. As far as our on-time performance, we had a, uh, we did a, uh, what we call a safety performance blitz uh, competition, as you might say, in February. It went pretty well. We it yielded a lot of information, you know, related to our routes, future opportunities for improvement. Uh, and, you know, so from, from this, we overall, we saw a slight increase. Um, and we're just going to continue to work with the comment on this uh, and team up on, you know, some of the things that, that we saw that, that you know, that, we, that probably some opportunities uh, for us. So uh, that's, a, that's ongoing. I mean, DART numbers were a slight decrease, but still within line or still within their target. So they continue to do uh, a good job in that area. So I can thank Dennis. Dennis, did you have anything as far as start uh, cancellations or performance you want to share real quick? Close out. We'll think of our, our cancellations. Like I said, when I first took over three years ago, we were about 18 to 20 percent cancellation, daily cancellation rates. And we've been seeing a trend over the past year of it being the highest around 8 percent. So it's been all by getting those cancellations down. It's it's allowing us to actually serve those passengers that are that we need to, and we're sending a bus out for no reason. So the cancellation has been gone down tremendously, um, and we're still continuing to monitor that on the month. Okay, great. And we did see um, uh, some decreases in ridership, uh, slightly in from January to February. Uh, so. You know, we, we need to continue to monitor what that looks like for the future and how, how we build that out um, and look at look at our ridership and recapturing it or however we decide to go. But, you know, we'll not obviously keep continuing to monitor, report that information on, on the, you know, the system that's available. Uh, other than that, we had a good month overall, uh, again, meeting many, exceeding many of our targets. Uh, and so I'm open for uh, any questions. I I just I missed the number of uh, the percentage of the darts. Uh, what was that again? Dark cancellations. Seven eight percent right now. Okay, it's seven thank you. Hmm? Mr. Coops, on, yes. on on your ridership analysis. Yeah. How much uh, input do you get from uh, Harry? 
own name. He's on Elohim. Oh, he's own name. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm here. My apologies for my tardiness uh to the committee. Uh it was actually removed off of my calendar for some odd reason. Uh so I think there were just some technical difficulties. I've always been in the meeting, so I my apologies for uh any issues here. So I um Mr. Ferguson asked how much input um yeah. Yeah. Uh, ridership from you. I think you were you're going to respond. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what Lenny um and his team does they they receive the data. Uh, we often we review the data. Uh, we um answer or ask any questions that may need to be answered or asked. You know, to make sure we uh understand what the data means. Um, a part of that, uh, like the ridership reports that we produce, we take that opportunity to take a look at a holistic approach of kind of where we are. And um, in terms of like a service trend over months after months after months, like we can look at stuff even post, uh, well, pre their contract as well. Uh, so we, we work hand in hand. And also, too, we coordinate with APC data as well, um, being able to, uh, you know, just try to see where we are on bus stop levels. Uh, and figuring out ways that we can improve uh, the way we provide service. I have another question. On this ridership data, where does it come from? Who prepares it? So the, the numbers, um, they come from uh, Genfair, Fairbox, uh, our system is where, the, where we, the numbers come from, and they feed into another system uh, called SFT. Um, which is a, I guess, for all intents and purposes, houses all the, the different data. So our assistant, my assistant DM, he goes into the SFT system and pulls the data out of so what you see is that that data that's you, in that system. You, you actually prepare your we, own ridership data. We we prepare that and we provide that to um, yes. Is your um just average daily ridership totals graph? Does that include the uh, Gangtok ridership numbers? It does not. Okay, so those are two separate yes. data points. That... Yes, sir. So. Hmm. I don't know who, I guess this goes to you, Ms. Bino. This uh this agenda preparation, it doesn't have a space if some public wanted to speak. That's enough. Okay, we'll address that. Yeah. Make sure you make that change. But I, I have I have grave concerns about the, uh, this information that we have a meeting and the principals aren't present. And these are contract principles. I mean, that should never happen. You know, I have bad, I have bad feelings about that. But, and and this has been going on, and one of our major catastrophes is is with this contract consultant. You know, I have many, many concerns about that. Well, that's all I have. So, motion to adjourn. Second.